I recently developed this experimental extruder which uses timing belts to push the filament. It's already capable of 3D printing a guitar neck, but I had to do some improvements before releasing it. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build an awesome website and save time. More about them later in the video. This is flexible filament, this is very flexible filament, and this is extremely flexible filament. As a matter of fact, this is the most flexible filament available on the market today with a sure hardness of 60A. This has around the same softness as an inner tube. Although I received several comments saying that this extruder could be very capable of printing those flexible filaments, it turns out not to be the case. How I found out, I'll show you later. But first we are going to put together the next iteration of this thing. I've got all parts laid down on this table, except for one, and that's the gear that's pressed on this motor. It's filled mid-print and I again managed to destroy the fab film, so I have to replace that. This particular version uses some specialized parts, like these flat inserts and these special reamer bolts. These parts are quite hard to get, so I'm also going to make a version which uses nuts and regular bolts. Everything is printed out of pig like resin with a metallic green dye from 3D resins. 3D resins has an interesting line of resin which is similar to conventional plastics and in this case it's similar to peak this isn't as strong as conventional peak but it has a similar chemical resistance and that's what we need in a future video everything is printed on the anycubic photon m3 max and i thought that the photon mono x was big it even has a pump on the back which will automatically refill the resin these parts aren't that big so i haven't used that and i also am a bit hesitant of using that with these specialized resins these relatively small parts can came out nice, very sharp. The extruder part is put together and there is an interesting way to find out if an extruder is capable of extruding these very flexible filaments. It was a tip from Max from Drop Effect. He developed this extruder which is called the Omnia Drop. This thing is very good at extruding flexible filaments. And he showed me that place the filament in here. You can just put the end at the table and see if you can extrude and it should block on oh, this thing blocks this stuff wants to go everywhere besides where you want it to go we figured out with the old version of the proper extruder if i'm going to start extruding then it will just continue and the filament just comes out the gap is just simply too large so with this new extruder this gap is way smaller okay. ah. well it pushes it it to the side here and if I prevent that then it also blocks till a certain point then eventually it will find its way out somewhere but it's already a lot better first I have to print the extruder gear and then I can put the whole assembly together I managed to press on the gear and this whole design can be downloaded for free from my website. A while ago I decided to host my own designs and this way I get full control over what you get to see 
and how you get to see it. I haven't used Squarespace though, which in hindsight I should have done. And they are the sponsor of this video. Although I do have some experience building websites, it's definitely not my core business. I'm convinced that with Squarespace, you save a lot of time and frustration while getting a better looking website. So let's say if you want an online store, you can immediately select between templates whichever template you choose the functionality is the same i've chosen the plants and pots for for your home squarespace is an all-in-one platform but it's more than i initially thought besides selling products you can also schedule appointments and have member areas you can create multiple income streams on your website very interesting i'm working on a website johnshone.com if you go to squarespace.com you get a free trial and once you're ready for launch go to squarespace.com slash slash printing and get 10% off of your first website or domain. All right, back to the video. This is the printer that I actually started this channel with and I think this is a perfect platform to do the experiments on. It's nice and open. <laughs> wow, I forgot. This bracket over here is where my phone can be placed on. This is actually the way how I filmed my intro with this bracket that's still on there. And the first thing I'm going to add to this machine is the Wamba Mutant. Maybe you have to clean this thing first. This is dirty. It has a nice texture to it. I will keep it this way. In order for this Wamba Mutant to fit, we need a tool plate and I'm going to print that on the Kitty Tech iFast which is an interesting 3D printer which Kitty Tech sent me quite recently. It has a heated chamber. This thing is capable of printing some engineering materials up to polycarbonate and nylon. I'm somehow not a fan of these types of build plates. I often run into the issue that the build plate itself is warping. I had to clamp it down on both sides and in order to do that I had to do a little modification to the sprinter. Sorry, kitty tag. It's a champ at printing polycarbonate. Right, I've added this tool holder and now I have to mount this to the tool plate and therefore we need two screws. These two holes at the back, I can just mount this plate directly to it. I've got this very old hot end which was originally mounted on the CR10. I've made an adapter for it with Bowden tube so I can just slide it in here. And I can mount this to the back of this extruder. So that's quite straightforward. These cables are a bit short. But that's because I've used this with this swappable hot end that I've made in a one of my first videos. I've connected everything and it looks pretty good. There's one issue is that there is some movement here. So I think I have to adjust this bracket so it can also be mounted here at the lower point on this plate. At least I can test it. I've turned on the machine and it shows the right temperature. And I assumed that this fan was running constantly. So I'm unsure if I have connected it wrong. 
Yes, hot and fan and part and fan are swapped. And now this fan is running constantly. Okay, and hopefully it extrudes and it doesn't blow up this main board. If you are completely lucky, then it will also rotate in the proper direction. If that will happen, then it would be the first time on this channel. Okay, I have to reverse the direction. It's extruding in the wrong direction. Of course, it was reversed. Of 10 millimeters. And it extrudes. <laughs> but in the wrong direction. <laughs> but now I can just swap out all the wires. It's standard procedure. Then I only have to modify the um, extruder steps and then we should be able to print with it. I'm going to print one of these gears quickly out of this cheap PLA to see if, the if everything is set up correctly. It's actually running quite well. You can hear that it's sometimes skipping steps. That's the motor. I have to increase the motor current in order for this thing to print reliably. Okay, I've increased the stepper motor current a bit, so hopefully it doesn't skip. Driver still isn't blowing up, fortunately. Okay, don't skip. I think this thing is running smoothly. Retraction torture test. <laughs> I'm going to let this thing finish. And then we are going to print flexible filaments. I'm going to start with the least flexible filament. Then we are going to work our way up. Uh, okay. Well, something strange is happening. This extruder is being pushed into that direction. I think I have to modify my design a bit, but um, this gear looks a bit um, unexpected. I've modified this hot end holder and now it can be mounted to the bottom of this plate and it's a lot stiffer. There's almost no movement in here. I think I'm ready to print flexibles with it. Hopefully it doesn't fill with this filament. That would be a bit anticlimactic. This is going to work. It will be a miracle. Problem is that the filament is being pushed to the side of the belt. I had to modify the design a bit. These are the two parts. And I've added these two flanges here. The belt is flush against it. And it also puts even more stress to the belt itself because it's going to rub against this flange. I'm currently printing it. And what I try is to place this flange at the bottom of this as of the build plate. These features are quite small, but I managed to print it. Especially this one was very tough to print. I had to sand away the support around this flange. Now this is the filament path. Hopefully that's enough. I'm going to put this thing together and we will find out. I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is that even with these flanges, it just runs as smooth as it previously did. Still, the, the, the least flexible filament is still being pushed aside. And now it's the belt itself that's... It... Uh, I didn't sleep well. But I think I came up with a solution. I've added these two belt pushers. So now it shouldn't be possible for this belt to be pushed aside. This belt can't go anywhere. There are two options. Or it just blocks because there is too much friction. Or it works. I don't think there is an in-between. Hopefully these two small pieces is the solution to our problem. Oh, and I definitely did not let this thing fall to the ground. I've mounted everything back together, loaded up the filament. I'm going to do one more try. If it fails, then I'm not going to try anymore. I've lost my faith a bit, so I've reduced the print speed to 1200 millimeters a minute. <sighs> okay. It looks like... It's extruding without skipping. It's printing flexible filament. Those two small belt pushers, they are doing their work. OK, 
Okay, we mustn't celebrate too soon because we only managed to print with the least flexible material. I still had a problem that this extruder was skipping. I decided to go with the American approach using a bigger motor. This was the biggest motor I could find that fits on this thing. It barely scratches this profile here. I tried a second time and now this gear basically came out perfect. It's time to step up. Holy fucking shit, it works. It's printing Ninja Flex. <laughs> this is the 93A. This is the 85A, and now we are going to 65A. There's filament coming out. Let's start the print and see if this thing is capable of printing the whole thing. Well, there is filament coming out. Am I really printing the world's most flexible filament with an experimental extruder? <laughs> that I've designed myself. Only a couple of extruders are capable of doing this. Also one thing that's fun to mention, I'm using the stock Creality hot end, which has a filament path, which is this long, and all the other extruders have a way shorter filament path. <laughs> what? <laughs> This is Ninja Flex. <laughs> this is insane. And it looks good too. The extruder can print the world's most flexible filament. I want to say quick thanks to my Patreon supporters, especially these guys. These are my top tier Patreon supporters. Your support helps a lot with these projects. I think it's safe to say that I can print the world's most flexible filament with this thing. I eventually managed to print at the speed of 30 millimeters a second. And I think that's quite reasonable. That's the standard speed for printing TPU. And that's the standard TPU. Maybe I can print a bit faster when I do some tolerances a bit different. I also make sure that there is a version which can be printed with a regular FDM printer. I added a custom support, but I will explain everything on my website. You can download it for free. This is part of the x series in which I will try and find the strongest possible 3D print using out of the box and experimental ways of printing. So I really hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and see you in the next video. Bye. Oh man.